Welcome to our second class lesson. We will start by reciting the Lord's Prayer, followed by three Hail Marys and Gloria. The three Hail Marys are for faith, hope, and charity. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord's with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord's with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you recall from last week, when we do when we sign ourselves, we hold our three fingers like this. And we take these two and we close them. This, the three, represents the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And these two fingers, we bent them. This represents Jesus' humanity, and this represents Jesus' divinity, because Jesus is man and God. And also, I want you to remember one thing, that the Lord loves us, no matter what. Loves you, loves me, loves us all. He loves us so much that he sent his only beloved son to die for our sins. How do we know this? It's in the Bible. The Bible tells us so. If you open up your Bible to John 3, 16, that means chapter 3, verse or sentence 16, it says God loves the world so much that he sent his beloved son to come in and die on the cross. Also, God tells us every day not to be afraid. Do not be afraid. That verse, it's stated in the Bible 365 times. If you do the math, that's one time every day. And today's lesson, we will try and recap what we talked about last week. Last week, we discussed our catechism, the Catholic Church's catechism. Catechism is a manual of religious instructions arranged in a format of question and answer. The book on catechism is arranged by questions and answers. 
So if you have a question, you go to that question and you'll find the answer. Very simple. Catechism teaches us about God, about sin, about Jesus Christ, our salvation, the law of, the, of God, but the prayers and the sacraments of the Catholic Church. Today, we will focus more on God. God is a transcendent being. What that means is he is a supreme being that cannot be approached or seen. And also, he is an eminent being, which means he's involved in the world. He's part of this world. Now you're going to say, well, how is that? How is he part of the world? But then he's not part of the world. He's separate from the world. That's easy to explain. God, in his godly form, the supreme being, is above all. He cannot be seen because he is too powerful and too mighty to be seen. He cannot be approached because he is God. You cannot approach him. We're mere humans. The Old Testament tells us sometimes of how the Hebrew people, who were the first people to recognize God, the living God, God the Father, the Creator, they were so afraid of God that they used to think if you were to get, to get a glimpse of God, you will literally die. Because that just could not happen. But in his eminent state, we're talking about the person of Jesus Christ. This is the one that was born, became man, lived here on earth about 2,000 years ago. He was among people. People saw him, touched him, felt him, dealt with him. He was in every sense that we can think of, a person like me and you. He was one of us. So depending on how we're talking about God, we can see this. So if we're discussing God, the Father, the Father figure, as we say in the name of the Father, the Father figure, He is the one that's above all, and He is the transcendent one that cannot be seen or felt. And then we talk about the Son, our Father, the Son, the son was the one that was born of a woman, just like me and you. He had a mother, a human mother. And this is the God that we can feel, touch, and see. He is the God that we consume every time at Mass when we go into 
the altar and receive the host. This is the one that you are getting trained and taught to understand. So at the end of the, the day, after you're done with, um, with our time, with our studying time, the day of your communion, you will be able to receive the eminent God. And then we have the Holy Spirit. This is the God that carries us, that strengthens us, that gives us the power to say yes or no, to make the choices that we make. See, God the Creator created us and he could have created us as his slaves to do whatever he wanted us to do all he had to do was think it and we would obey but that's not what God had in mind because he's a loving God he's a caring God and instead he gave us free will he gave us everything if you look around in the world, I don't think you can think of anything that's not around. But it's up to us to choose whether to take that thing or not. Even in the form of good and evil, we have a choice. We don't only choose what we like to eat or where we like to go or what we like to do. We can also choose if we want to follow the path of good or the path of evil. The Lord gave us this free will, like I said, because he loved us. When he created us, he created us for a reason. But he wanted us out of our free will, out of our own choices, to choose and to do what he created us for. Do you know why the Lord created us? Well, he created us for three things. Number one was to know him. Number two was to love him. And number three was to serve him. Not to serve him as slaves, but to serve him out of love. Just like how he provided for us out of love, we have to repay him out of love. We have to give him back that love. See, love is a beautiful thing. To have love and to be loved is awesome. But you know what's even better? To give love. If everybody in the world loved me, I will feel empty inside unless I start loving back. And by love, we don't mean just doing things for each other. That's not love. Love is where I do things for you just because, whether I know you or not. To be nice, to be kind, to be cordial to everybody. This is why God created. To know him, do we know God? Well, if you read the Bible, you will know God. If you follow the teaching of the church, you know God. To love him, do we love him? If we do his commands, if we do as he said, of course we love him. If we live as he asks us to live, then of course we love him. Do we serve him? 
I hope so. That's what we're trying to convey to you. That's what we're trying to show you and teach you. And I hope at the end of our class, you will learn and understand that. Now let's go back to creation. In the book of Genesis, which is the first book in the Bible, there are two chapters that deal with creation, how God created everything. In the first book, it talks about how God created everything. In the second book, second chapter, sorry, it focuses more on the creation of man, humans, and their relationship with the Lord. And if we go to the creation story, we will find that God created everything, the whole universe, what you can see of this universe and what you cannot see, which is even more. He created all that in six days. On the first day, he created light because in the beginning, there was nothing. It was pitch black, nothing in there. So the first day he created light to show that there is some brightness to differentiate between the dark and the light. The second day, he created the heavens, the sky. On the third day, God created land, sea, plants, trees, the things that live on land and live in the sea as far as creatures and vegetations. Day four, the Lord created the sun, moon, and stars. On the fifth day, he created the sky as separate from the earth. Day six, he created man. The difference between all these, when he created man, he created man in his image. So now, what that means, if we take it literally, when we think God created us in his image, that means looking like him. So next time you want to see what God looks like, look in the mirror. This is what the Lord looks like. Like you, like me, like your family. That is taken literally. But of course, God a whole lot more than that. On the second book, or the second chapter of Genesis, focuses more on creating Adam, creating Eve, the Garden of Eden, how they lived in that garden, what they were told. What they were told in that garden is, you can have whatever you want in this garden. All this is for you. All I want from you is, you see this tree over here? Do not touch it. This is not for you. It could be an apple tree. It could be an orange tree. It could be any kind of tree. That's not the point. The point is, it was a rule that the Lord put for man to see how man was going to follow God's orders. 
So, man, in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, it tells us that it was the serpent that got into the mind of Eve and told Eve, Oh no, you need to eat from that because that will make you like God. That's why he told you not to eat from it because he doesn't want you to be like him. Well, Eve being a weak human because she's not God, being somewhat weak and having a choice, guess what? She made the wrong choice. Oh, yes, I can eat from that tree. And what if I become like God? I want to, do, to become like God. I want to become God. Wrong, Eve. And Eve thought to herself, well, listen now. If I am going to eat from that tree, Adam must share with me. Because we share and share alike. Me and Adam. You've got to Adam. But let's eat. It's only an apple. It's only an orange. Whatever. Let's eat from this. And we can become like God. Adam said, okay. And they ate from that tree. And guess what? The very first thing that happened with them after eating from that tree... They did not become gods. They did not become smarter. They did not become stronger. They did not become wiser. What happened? They knew what sin was. They saw the wrong side of things. They realized that they were naked. They didn't know it before. They thought they were wearing the most beautiful clothes. Now they realize they are naked because they can see their soul now. And their soul is blemished. If anything, they, create, they made sin because they did not follow the order of the Lord. They became greedy. They wanted to be like God. And what happened? They fell from grace. And God punished them both. And because of their punishment, we were created... So you see, even in punishing them, in a way it was a reward from God. Because he told Eve, now you will bear children. And with the, from those and you will bear them with agony. And that's why when your mother had you, if you can talk to her. She will tell you, she says, she was in pain when you were born. And this is how creation happened. And this is how we were landed on planet Earth. This is why God created man. But also God created everything else to glorify God. I don't know about you, but when you look at things, do you stop and think for a second, wow, how beautiful that is. I wonder how God looked like. If all these things that we look at are so beautiful, the trees, the butterflies, the flowers, many human beings, Many things, the stars, the moon, the sun. If we can think of how beautiful they are, can we imagine how beautiful God would be? Because he created them. 
And we should glorify God in everything that we see, in everything that we feel, in everything that we touch. When we look at our family, we should praise God and thank Him for them. When we go to school, we should pray and thank God that we have school, that we have teachers, that we are learning, that we have a brain, that we have a mind. When we look around and see everything around us, our siblings, our neighbors, our friends, the things that we have, the beautiful clothes that your parents get you, the beautiful gadgets that you have that you play with nonstop all day long. Do you stop and think to thank your parents for getting them to you and to thank God for providing for your parents to be able to get you these things? All things come from God. All things come from God because he loved that he loved us too much, too much. Can we please give some of that love back to him? Dear Lord, we beg of you that you give us the wisdom to go about our daily life, to be able to make the right decisions on every day the decisions that will serve your will, that will serve you. Please, Lord, show us the Lord. Show us the road for salvation. Make us worthy of your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have provided for us. Thank you, Lord, for everything. May God bless us in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, and we'll see you next week. Lust is an excessive desire for pleasure that is forbidden by the six commandments and leads you to, a, to hatred of God. Then we have anger. Anger is the opposite of being meek. A person gets angry for no reason sometimes. You just let your mind go wild. And... When you get really angry, you cannot control what's going around you or what you will do. And most of the time, when a person gets really angry, they become impatient and they're full of hatred and they began to curse. Gluttony. Gluttony is an excessive desire for food and drink. And what that does is when you eat too much or drink too much, whether it's just food or candy or alcohol, what you're doing is you're causing injury to your body and mind. And since our bodies are the temple of Christ, temple of God, what happens is then we are inflicting damage to the temple of God. The next one is envy. Envy is the opposite of pure love. When you're envious of some, somebody or something, you feel bad that somebody has something that you don't have just because. 
That person did not do anything to you, did not cause you any pain, did not cause you any problem. You just hate them because they don't, because they do have something you don't. And you think you should have that thing, not them. I hate them because they have a better car. I hate them because they have a better backpack. Or he's got better games. Hmm. And that causes us to wish harm on others. And when you wish harm on somebody, what you're doing is it's just as bad as if you were to do that thing to them. If you wish that they were dead, well, guess what? You killed them already. Because in your mind, you committed murder. In your mind, you committed a sin. And that's something that should be taken to confession. And you should be sorry for. Sloth. Sloth is being lazy. Being so lazy of your mind and your body, you don't want to do anything. And what it does is it causes our spiritual self to be trivial, to be nothing, to be worthless. And all these, these are called the 